Hello everyone, this is Jonathan here, and welcome to the first tutorial video in my Laser Defender follow-up series. This uh, short video series is based off of the Udemy course taught by Ben Tristram and a couple of other guys. So if you don't already have this project, you can go download it from the Udemy course. You will have to sign up for it. Or you can go uh, actually do the project yourself first, which is what I would recommend. And hopefully you're coming to this video series as a follow-up after you've already completed those modules. So let's get right into it by starting to create a cool particle system that will render explosions when your player ship and enemy ships blow up. So to get this, we're going to have to create a new empty game object in the hi hierarchy and call it explosion. And we'll be creating several types of explosions, but for now, just create one single game object, call it explosion, and then go ahead and add a particle render or particle system, excuse me, to it. And make sure that is showing up somewhere in the center of your scene. Now, you're not a stranger to particles at this point if you've been following the course because you've already created a star field. So this shouldn't look completely strange and foreign to you, but all the same, let's just go over what some of these things do here. I'm going to make this section a little bigger here on the side. Oops, I wanted to make a finicky. There it is. Okay. So we want to uh, our explosion to be very short-lived, so I'm going to reduce the time on the duration probably to around 0.25 seconds. Now you can't really see what this is doing while it's looping, uh, but if I just stop it and simulate it again, you'll just see that uh, the particles, well, the, the whole animation effect doesn't last very long. In fact, right now you're not seeing very much, and that's because of the other settings. Uh, so, number one, we're going to want more particles to come out of here, and I'm going to set this max particles 5,000 and make a nice big explosion, and I'm going to also change the emission to 5,000, and let's just uh, stop it again and simulate and see how that looks. Okay, well, now we have a whole bunch of particles that kind of go on a little bit too long, and that's because of their start lifetime. We have their start lifetime set to 4.73 seconds right now. So let's just reduce that to one second and see how that looks. We'll simulate that again. Okay, so that, that looks better, but it still looks probably a little too long, and well, the explosion's obviously also too big for ships of these size. Uh, so let's try maybe 0.25 seconds for that as well and see how that looks. Okay, that might last for a decent amount of time. It still doesn't look anything like a half decent explosion, but we're getting there, one step at a time, baby steps. Uh, for number, another thing, these particles are obviously way too big right now, so let's just reduce their size to, uh, it was at one, let's just try half that size and see how that looks. Okay, again, we are, we are getting a little bit uh, closer there. Not perfect yet, but that's okay. Uh, start speed, are, are they going at an appropriate speed when they're emitted? Uh, 2.5, let's reduce that in half. Well, I'm not sure if it's going to actually look better, faster, or slower right now. Ah. Hard to tell. I think they're still lasting too long, though. Maybe try, just try reducing that duration all the way down. No, you know what? I think I, that was actually an ideal time. So some of this is very finicky, and you can play around with these settings. I don't want to spend too long on this, but I just want to get, kind of getting get it to look like a halfway decent explosion. Um, I think their start size may still be too big, 0.4. Uh, one thing I don't think you've dealt with is any of these other settings down here, force over lifetime, color over lifetime, etc., etc. Well, one thing that's bugging me about this explosion is it's very staticky looking, like it looks the same the whole way through. Well, there's a very simple way to change that, and that's by adding some color and some size. So I'm going to go to size over lifetime, put a check mark there, and activate that. And we can almost create a nice fade out effect if we do this by saying uh, we want to give it a curve. And if we double click this bar, excuse me, uh, it, basically I had to pause the video for a second here just to find out why I wasn't able to uh, edit this curve. And of course, it's because you edit it down here in this particle system curves, which had actually been lowered when I started this uh, project because I downloaded it from the Udemy site. Uh, since mine has already been edited. So if you pull this up, this particle system curves, if it doesn't come up by default, this is where you can actually edit the size of your particles. 
And I'm just going to pick a default curve here, which is sloping downwards, to basically say I want my particles to get sl smaller over its lifetime. And looking here, I think it's actually disappearing too soon, so I'm going to up this duration to 0.5. I'm going to change the start lifetime to 0.5. And uh, well, let's just see how that looks again. I think that's actually going for a decent length of time, but they might be starting too small now because we're lowering the size, so just to make it, there we go. So a lot of this is very finicky and just requires playing around with it and seeing if you actually like what you're seeing. Let's try eliminate, turning that in half. Okay, getting more explosion-y, but it all, it all looks way too solid right now still. That, that's my problem with it here. So what we're going to do is we're also going to change the color of this over the lifetime. And then if you uh, activate this check mark here and press the plus button next to the color, you'll get this window. And then you can change its color. So I'm going to basically have this uh, start out as kind of a white smoke, but then halfway through I'm going to change it to maybe red. And then if you click down here, you can add another change. I'm going to maybe change it to a gray because, you know, it's going to turn gray. And if you change, it, click these upper buttons, you can change the transparency. So basically, I want this smoke to have uh, essentially a fade out by the end. So I'm just going to change the alpha layer down. I'm going to put another one up here, and I'm going to put the alpha back up because I only want it to fade out at the end. And I'm just going to do the same thing on... Eh, I'm not going to do the same thing on this other side. Let's take a look and just see. Maybe not all maybe not all the way, but maybe we won't have the smoke start perfectly solid either. And let's just see how that looks now that it has some uh, transparency changing and some color changing at the same time. Well, it looks better. Uh, it's still way too solid of an object, though. So let's see what we can do about that. Uh, changing around some of these other settings here. Maybe there's too many particles coming out, and that's actually my problem. It was at 1,000 before, and I upped it to 5,000, which probably was too much. Okay, again, looking a bit better. Uh, but maybe the emission is still putting up too many particles at once, so I'm going to change, lower that to 100, simulate it, and okay, now we went too far the other route. So let's try that back one more time. All right, that's looking pretty good now. Maybe still a little too big, uh, but we can probably just do something about that by changing the overall scale of this explosion, maybe... 5.75, and there we go. I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. If I could play around with it longer and make it look a little better, but it's a nice solid explosion effect. So we're going to go ahead now and turn this explosion into a prefab. And then what we're going to have to do is create a smaller type of explosion because we also want an explosion to happen when our ships just get hit but not destroyed. So what we can do here is uh, create a duplicate explosion. Actually, we can't do it like this because that's already been prefabbed. So what I should do is delete the prefab. Now make a duplicate of my explosion turn that into a prefab, and now we can work on this other one here and just rename this small explosion. And what we can do here is uh, just kind of limit the number of particles that are coming out. Um, then we can do a simulation of this smaller explosion. A uh, mission. Oh, we'll, we'll put that at half. Okay, and I might just make even these this start size kind of smaller because it's a small explosion. We don't want it to be as, as noticeable. It's just kind of a short hit effect. And I'll even make it disappear faster so that instead of that other one, instead of being half a second, we'll make this a quarter of a second. There we go. Just very, very subtle. Uh, so now we have two explosion effects, and I'm going to turn that into a prefab as well. Uh, okay, so cool. Now what we need to do is actually give our... Uh, give these explosions a chance to 
happen when ships get destroyed. So let's start with the enemy ships. So we're going to go over and open up the enemy prefab. Where did they put this here? So find your, open up your enemy script and you'll just have to give me a second because I am working from the Unity project and I don't remember. Oh, I think, yeah, there's is just called en enemy behavior, isn't it? Yeah. So this would be the enemy behavior script. And what we need to do is we need to create some public game objects that we can put attach those explosions to. So I'm going to create a public game object explosion and small explosion. And then we are going to attach that onto our enemy ships. So we are going to go over here in the inspector, look for where it's missing those game objects, and we're going to put prefabs onto prefabs. So we're not going to put these ones from the inspector. In fact, we're going to get rid of those shortly. But for now, we can just kind of go down to the prefab folder and put this explosion on here, and then this small explosion on here. Okay, and back into the script. We are now going to have to instantiate uh, an explosion effect when the enemy ships dies. Now, I just remember right now the ships die in one hit. Uh, I think they die in one hit, so, so there is no use for the small explosion one at this moment, but we are going to instantiate an explosion, the main explosion effect when the ships die. So right over here, we're just going to write game object, I already called something explosion, so new explosion or enemy explosion or whatever you want to call it, equals instantiate. And we're going to instantiate our prefab. We're going to uh, instantiate it right where the enemy ship is because the enemy ship is dead now. Transform.position, quaterion.identity, and we're going to type as a game object. Okay, so let's put that in right now and let's try that out and see if it works. Oops, that was just the one I left in the scene. But yes! Ships die, and we get a cool-looking explosion. Now, you can't see this in the inspector because I have it in full-screen mode right now, but it would be creating... I'll, I'll just do it here in the small mode. It is going to be creating, of course, extra copies of itself in the hierarchy here, explosions, uh, which is going to stack up if we get a lot of enemies killed, so we want to take care of that right away. And we're just going to do that very quickly by creating a script... Uh, that's called self-destruct. So create a new script here. Self-destruct. Oops, that's not how we name scripts. Sorry, I've been doing more 3D modeling than Unity lately. Uh, self-destruct. And it's just going to be a very simple script. Don't need the update function. In the, we're going to create a public float. Public float destroyed after and by default it will be three seconds and we're just going to say destroy game object after the uh, float destroyed after and what this will do is it will destroy the game object in the hierarchy uh, that this is attached to after that amount of time has passed. So we'll just go ahead and we'll attach that on our explosion prefab. What are you talking about? It doesn't exist. I'm going to close my particle system and put this self-destruct script on here. Oh, because uh, it has a small s over here. Make sure your class is actually named the same thing as your script. So that should fix that problem right there. So we're going to put, attach that, apply the change to the prefab. We can get rid of that in our hierarchy, and we'll do the same thing here to this small explosion. Put that self to script on it, apply, and destroy. And now let's just make sure that those explosions are actually get destroyed destroying themselves in the hierarchy. And we can see that they are, they're disappearing up here, which means it's working. 
So once we get uh, enemy health in place, uh, we'll take care of the smaller explosions and I'm going to just leave it up to you to see if you can figure out how to get uh, that big explosion working on your player ship right now as a challenge to yourself. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned something. Uh, don't forget to subscribe.